here to talk to Molly Wire about the new phase of film and financing and the intersections and amplifying my impact in the film industry. I think it starts first of all with my persuasion about the fact that the creative art space and storytelling is a competitive advantage for us as Nigerians, as Africans. I think we are innately storytellers it's in our DNA. Um, and even when you look from the sort of ancient oral traditions to now, how things have progressed with filmmaking, we are just, we were built for this. So in a way, I consider it to be a gold mine and a natural resource. Um, and like every other resource should be mined and taken to its full extent because I see the economic imperative of what this does on a job creation standpoint, on an economic transformation standpoint. And then we're just built for it. So it's perfect harmony. And of course, coming in as a finance professional, um, I've also seen some of the gaps, a large part of the gaps being the finance side. I'm very aware of the investment world and the reality about the capital allocators. There are many people now who are looking for alternative means, alternative financing options. Um, I'm also aware of the funding need on the Nollywood side. And it's me sort of feeling that I can bridge that gap in some form, as with many other people. That film and financing, which is you know, my background and passion of film and finance. I'm hoping to you know, sort of be a go-between to help the, the, the creative industry, apart from doing more productions, as you had rightly asked, but also helping filmmakers to access capital, helping the creative industry and the creative world of people to speak the language of both sides. You know, because sometimes the, the, the investors, you know, perhaps are not speaking the language of the storytellers and the storytellers are not speaking the language. And I think I understand both languages. And so being able to mix that creative insight to economic viabilities and telling a story, hand-holding, project managing, advising, and standing in the gap of those two worlds. And, you know, so um, is this, this new phase is, is what it's about. I'm, I'm here for it. So the Osamede idea came to me um, and became somewhat of a confluence of many things that I represent um, in terms of what my passion was for the nation. Nigeria, in terms of my love for the arts, in terms of my love for the Edo culture and story, which is obviously my home state, um, but also wanting to tell a story of a courageous woman who made a sacrifice to make a change to her community. And so there were many layers of interest that I had about the nation and about, you know, um, developing countries as a whole and the patterns of our stories and what we do and really to be somewhat of a charge of how we all can be better and add value to our communities and lead the change. And I wanted to tell that through this beautiful, glorious setting of the Benin Kingdom, which of course is, you know, one of the most advanced um, historical um, civilizations. And so having done that, you know, we did that for about 12, 12 live showings in 2021 and 2022. We then um, wanted to expand the storyline and there was just so much more we wanted to layer into the story. And of course, the next avenue was, that was fitting was a film avenue to tell a broader story. We wanted to go back to the you know, historical times. There was grace for it and I had the vision and I was sure that you know, this could be done. I was then very fortunate and very um, committed to finding the right partners in terms of the director to run this for me. And I was very fortunate to have found um, the director, Mr. James Omokwe, who did a phenomenal job and used the prowess of his directorial skill and production skill and storytelling skill, buying fully the vision and of course in line of, with what he already does um, with his epic stories to create this dream um, of this epic historical that um, you know the world will see as this extremely beautiful, beautiful story. So was it challenging? You know, it had its challenges, but it was actually fun. It was beautiful to have the dream come alive, to see the vision come to reality, and just to have the complement of great actors and the great setting. And we went back, of course, to Edo State to shoot the movie and to have the complement of 
the beautiful landscape that, and, and production design and sets people and everybody who was so skilled in their work to deliver this great um, film. So it was, it was quite, quite exciting and every challenge we, we, we surmounted. Very much so in that we implemented everything we do with business, we brought it to film. And of course, when we even did the play, we then saw, um, even after the first um, showing, um, I was surprised to learn after we had done it successfully and even commercially successfully too, that that was quite a, an uncommon fit that people usually don't break even even in the in theater, you know, not on, not until years. But it then showed you, you know, I guess the beauty or the power of that background of having, you know, um, working in finance and, and building business that one brought in. And you could understand, and we, we saw the advantage, of course, of, of, of that background. At the end of the day, it's the same when we come talk about the issue of success or moving a project from idea to execution. It's in a sense, the same principles. The principles of the vision, of of the plan, of the structure, of the market size, of routes to markets, of capital raise, of all of those elements. It's a different kind of experience, but very exciting for me because I guess with the art form, you know, when you think about it, is this thing about trusting just an idea, unlike selling financial products that are there, guaranteed or what have you, or structured in a certain way. In this case, you're coming literally with, a, with, a, with, a, with an idea, you know, and trusting investors to buy into the idea and of course having to prove the commercial viability or potential viability. It was also interesting to think about the best ways to, to, to raise that finance in terms of how you want to share the risk, in terms of all, so there was all of those things and which brought its challenge, but not so. I, what I did find in my case was that um, we, we drew from the network you also drew from the goodwill and the trust that one has gathered over the years where people could, even if they hadn't seen your work in film, as this is the first time film, they have seen your work in other places and could trust that you would deliver success. And they could trust that you would just be as just as transparent as you have been in other phases. And um, so, so it was beautiful to see that that can sort of translate and which is what we experienced in, in having, of course, uh, investors support this venture. Like, it's not even an issue of thought. We've made a great movie, and I don't say that lightly. It's, 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 it's a great movie in every sense of the world. We have told a, a story that, you know, the world will see and see how beautiful, um, what, how the justice we have given to this beautiful historical um, Edo story. And it's just really to say, time will tell. You'll see what we've done. I'm convinced that um, you know, it, it's a groundbreaking movie.